Welcome to the Bob Hagen Show, sponsored by It's Relevant. I'm your host, Bob Hagen, and the goal of our show is to introduce you to the Stanford that we know, the heroes, unsung heroes, and the movers and the shakers of this town and the surrounding communities. I hope you enjoy our show, and thanks for joining in. Today on the show, I'm pleased to have a good friend of mine, David Mezapel. Not only is he a native of Stanford, uh, now residing in Florida, but he's also a very successful entrepreneur and author. David, thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. you have a very unique uh, book that's coming out that I'd love you to talk to, to us about and let the people know about, and I think it's right up my alley in, in regards to setting a, a nice mental image for everybody, and that's Contagious Optimism. Right. What is that about? Contagious Optimism is a, an uplifting book series. It contains uh, real stories from real people, and advice and guidance from professionals. And it's sort of built on this whole positive forward thinking concept, which is finding the silver lining in every cloud. Let me ask you this, why? Why at this time? Why would you want to do something like that? It's a great question. A lot of people worldwide are struggling. They're having a hard time, political uncertainty, economic uncertainty. And I felt a book of this nature that, that is very uplifting with stories people can emulate Comes at, comes at the right time, and I think the market really needs it. Well, I agree with you. I think uh, there's so much going on, and you're not alone in this initiative. There's a lot of people that are helping you support it. Why don't you tell us about who's you know, helping you out and, and backing you on this great sure. cause? Well, the first thing is, instead of writing a book that's just one voice, one author, I thought if we had um, a lot of authors in a chicken soup for the soul kind of format, mm -hmm. we'd be bringing in a lot of interest, it would be captivating. People would be harder to put the book down because it's a lot of voices. So we have, um, in volume one, we have 85 co-authors. We have some great celebrities writing the forward and the preface. But the stories themselves are from real people, like you and me and everybody else that's going through hard times. It really is very diverse. Some people have unlimited relationship stories, and we could capture thousands of those. We have amazing sports stories where, where people come in with golf, basketball, tennis, football, whatever. It could be any of them. Um, business is amazing. How they started their business or how they worked up the corporate ladder. Uh, it's endless. And the way it works is people connect to us and they submit their stories. And then our team goes through them. We verify the validity of the stories. And then we copy edit them. And we compile them in these formats. And then... So it's a little bit of work, but it's, it's, very, it's very much worth it and very rewarding to read these stories. And is it basically a guide to change your outlook? Well, when the concept first started, which uh, Fairfield University, my alma mater, had talked to me about doing, it was supposed to be a business book that combines uh, positive thinking and business mm -hmm. with some of the innovations that I had used when I ran my company back, I started in 1990. Uh, but I thought, you know, let's take it beyond business. Let's, let's go across a variety of themes, relationships, education, business, sports, hobbies, health, whatever. Um, so we went across all these themes and from all these writers. Right. And this way it's a book for everybody. And it's, it's a global book. It's a global book. When, when did you see this and say, there's something I got to do to get this happening? Well... Throughout the 90s and early 2000s, Fairfield, among others, were, were pushing me to do this book, but in business, as I mentioned. And uh, 2008, 2009, I was ready to do it. I'd sold my company, and I thought this would be a great time. And I started reading books on optimism and studying the marketplace, and it hit me, like, you know, Chicken Soup is a great, great design, and I think we could take it another angle, but still have that same quality, that compilation quality, and take it beyond business. And it really just it hit me one day that I think this is the route I want to take it. And I started on that path, started recruiting writers, using social media and other grassroots marketing to you know, find writers. Sure. And, uh, and it's just been flowing great since. I uh, wanted to go back to you were saying the people who have backed you, the forward, the celebrities and all that. What's appealing about it for them? Well, the amazing thing is uh, how many people are into optimism and positive thinking more than I thought. Uh, some of the most mellow people, but very successful people, deep down are extremely energetic and extremely positive. And when you bring that out of people, and I think everybody does have it in them, 
when you bring that optimism out, it, it is contagious, hence the name. How about giving us an anecdote close to home here in Stanford, being a Stanford-based show, mm -hmm. uh, regarding optimism and, and someone you, you, you know, you've had incorporated with the book? Sure. It's a funny story. Um, about a month ago, I was uh, flying from uh, West Palm Beach to White Plains, and across the aisle from me on the plane was uh, Dan Tully, uh, originally a Stanford resident, sure. uh, chairman emeritus of Merrill Lynch. And uh, we, were, we were catching up because his children grew up with my brother and sister in the neighborhood that we used to live in off of Newfield Avenue. Make a long story short, um, nice conversation. Two days later, I run into him again at Colony Pizza. We couldn't believe it. Hadn't seen each other in 25, 30 years and uh, run into him twice in uh, basically a two-day period. So I felt this was serendipitous, and I'd ask him about writing for the book. I had heard through the grapevine that he was a big proponent of optimism. Wow. So, so I wrote him a letter after this two meetings. I wrote him a really nice letter, and he responded that he was interested in learning more and potentially writing the forward and writing maybe a short story for the book. And in working with him now over a month, and uh, receiving his writings and talking to him about his views of optimism and positive thinking, um, I really was very, I was always impressed with him, but I was even more impressed with his belief in positive thinking. Uh, he was telling me that um, he believes in the optimist creed. He keeps it on his wall. He reads it all the time. He created uh, different credos that the employees would follow all positive thinking related, all optimists. While at Merrill Lynch. While at Merrill Lynch. Wow. And he still follows them today. Uh, he has a series of about 10 books that are his favorite books on optimism. And he's just a real strong proponent of positive thinking. And it was very impressive and very refreshing. Well, I think you're onto something because, again, this is, uh, your mental attitude is, is really what is the key to your success, I believe, and, and also longevity. And uh, <clears throat> what's your, what's your long-term goal with this whole the long-term goal, well, this is a philanthropic project, mm -hmm. so money raised from the sale of this book, some of it goes to Fairfield U and other charities. When I was a student at Fairfield, they pushed me into an internship at IBM, which I ended up doing for four years, part-time during the school year and full-time in the summer. When I graduated, I started a company that I built on a lot of the fundamentals of not only my education, but that internship. And a big part of that, I owe, of course, not only to my my parents, sure. but to Fairfield U. So I want to give back to the school now, all these years later, uh, through this book. Then uh, additional profits will go to other charities that we decide which ones um, we should contribute to. So it's a philanthropic project. So after all the marketing expenses are paid and the publisher takes their share, there'll be hopefully some funds left, every volume that will spread out where we can. That's the plan really is to release a volume every six to nine months. It'll be a general volume. That's 12 to 13 themes each book. Uh, in tandem, we're going to run themed editions in tandem to the general editions, and that will be like a senior edition we're going to do, where we're going to capture stories from seniors around the world. And what's your goal with that? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Our goal with that is to connect, again, with real people, possibly through senior living facilities, independent living, assisted living, home care, connect with people through these organizations and capture their amazing stories, war stories, yeah. how they met their spouse stories, maybe stories about their children, what was amazing about their children, or their parents, stories about their parents. And the beauty of, of that particular theme is that these stories will go on into perpetuity. So if, if my great, great, great grandparent is in Contagious Optimism, volume, whatever, I could hand that down beyond how far out I am in the legacy line. So it's very exciting. In, in regards to the different themes, uh, <coughs> especially, especially with the seniors, I just think you have an untapped market for just knowledge, history, and, and, and really life lessons that can be passed on. I think that's I think that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Website is there a website they can go to to learn more about this if they want to get involved or or get a book or or, or whatever. Yeah, well, the first volume of Contagious Optimism mm -hmm. will be released in March of 2013. Congrats. That's volume that one. Great. Thank you. Uh, and then every six to nine months, we'll release a volume after that. Uh, the book will be in all languages. It'll be available in print. It'll be available in ebook. 
uh, Apple, Barnes & Noble, the whole, whole thing. Sure. And um, we have a website, which is contagiousoptimism.net. Contagiousoptimism.net, and that is our website. Wonderful. So they can read all about the book, my history. Uh, some, we have some uh, short stories on there that are excerpts from the book. They could also sign up for daily uh, motivational carrot sticks, we call them. Sure. So. Well, the reason I do a show is particularly about a guy like you. Right. And uh, what I try to do is the influencers, the unsung heroes that do things that are really good for people out there. And uh, I tip my hat to you. Uh, you're obviously a product of an unbelievable family who I'm privileged enough to know and thank think you. the world of. And I want to thank David Mezapel for being on my show. Again, his book is Contagious Optimism, which will be coming out. His website will be listed at the end. Uh, again, David, on behalf of the Bob Hagen Show, I can't thank you enough. It's been a real pleasure uh, having you as a friend and also having you on the show today. Well, thank you, you so too. much. Thank you. It's been an honor. I appreciate it.